Again. All right. Joined today by my brother Stuart again. And also our cat that just came in the room okay. again. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we're going to talk about a creepy pasta that went viral, I think around 2010. Is that right? Yeah. There's a fictitious story that started in 2010. And it's, uh, it was started on Reddit. It's a creepy pasta. So obviously, whether it's real or not, you know, I'll leave that up to you. But most creepy pastas are just good storytelling, right? And this one is called The Russian Sleep Experiment. Very well-known creepypasta about the experiment happening in Russia during World War II when scientists and researchers prevented people from sleeping to see what the effects of not sleeping had on the human body. So let's get into it. Russian researchers in the late 1940s kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental gas-based stimulant. They were kept in a sealed environment to carefully monitor their oxygen intake so the gas didn't kill them, since it was toxic in high concentrations. This was before closed-circuit cameras, so they only had microphones and 5-inch thick glass porthole-sized windows into the chamber to monitor them. The chamber was stocked with books, cots to sleep on, but no bedding, running water, and toilet, and enough dried food to last all five for over a month. Okay, so it... Obviously, they had prepared for this. They had prepped for it. Cots, no bedding. Cots You're and no bedding. You're not allowed to do a damn thing. Yeah. Hopefully, they had enough toilet paper because uh, 15 days is a long time for no pooping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. Everything was fine for the first five days. The subjects hardly complained, having been promised, falsely, that they would be freed if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. Their conversations and activities were monitored, and it was noted that they continued to talk about increasingly traumatic incidences in their past, and the general tone of their conversations took on a darker aspect after the four-day mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstances and events that led them to where they were and started to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternately whispering to the microphone on one-way mirrored portholes. Oddly, they all seemed to think they could win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades, the other test subjects in captivity with them. At first, the researchers suspected this was an effect of the gas itself. Okay, so they wanted, they were like trying to bargain their way out of it by the sound of it. After like one day of not sleeping, if I'm driving high, you know, 3 a.m., 2 a.m., I'll start hallucinating. Yeah. I did last night driving home. Yeah, I've, uh, <laughs> I've had periods of time in the military where I st had to stand duty, you know, on a Sunday and roll into a Monday work day and not get any sleep at all. And then you go the entire day and then you have like, you go to the field that day and you don't really sleep that night. And I've definitely had auditory and vis visual hallucinations because of that kind of stuff. I'm sure there's a lot of other people who have just like randomly by happen chance, like ended up in a situation where they didn't sleep for a day or two or 72 hours, depending on what the situation, the op tempo was. And they ended up having auditory and visual hallucinations. Definitely not safe to drive uh, during that period of time. Nope. So maybe you shouldn't do that going no. forward. No, when I get when I get really tired, I'll pull over at a rest area now. But I've definitely had it before, where especially when I used to drive from uh, Cherry Point to Western to visit my ex, I would be on the road at like midnight, one a.m. And I had just gotten up at 6 a.m. for PT the day before or something because it was like a weekend. Ugh. And I remember two specifically times. One was like I, I had a hallucination of a deer, but it was really huge. And I, I was like, you started blinking. I was like, that's not real. The second time was actually like a five foot tall crab just crossing the highway. And I was like, crab people. I know that's not real, but <laughs> that's still terrifying yeah <laughs> crab people crab, crab people. <laughs> people look like crab talk, talk like, like people. people all right 
Let's get on to the next part here. After nine days, the first of them started screaming. He ran the length of the chamber repeatedly, yelling at the top of his lungs for three hours straight. He continued attempting to scream, but was only able to produce occasional squeaks. <laughs> the researchers pro postulated that he had physically torn his vocal cords. The most surprising thing about this behavior is how the other captives reacted to it, or rather, didn't react to it. They continued whispering to the microphones until the second of the captives starting, started to scream. The two non-screaming captives took the book apart, smeared page after page with their own feces, and pasted them calmly over the glass portholes. The screaming promptly stopped. That's gross. I've dated girls like that before. Jesus. <laughs> wow. I've heard stories about prisoners, and I mean, I've even heard stories about people getting arrested who like sprayed feces in the patrol car because they were protesting being arrested or whatever. Um, I'm, a, I'm sure that actually, you know what? I saw a video the other day of a guy who smeared poop on his face when he was about to get kicked out of a store for shoplifting. And that was like his way of like preventing the manager and the security people from arresting him. He like reached into his pants and pulled it out and then wiped it all over his face. This is how I'm getting out of my next ticket. License and registration. Yeah, don't, Actually, <laughs> don't rec <laughs> I don't recommend ever wiping feces on anything unless it's toilet paper, like Harmful to a mature health. adult. The screaming promptly stopped. So did the whispering to the microphones. After three more days passed, the researchers checked the microphones hourly to make sure they were working since they thought it was in they thought it impossible that no sound could be coming with five people inside. The oxygen consumption in the chamber indicated that all five must still be alive. In fact, it was the amount of oxygen five people would consume at a very heavy level of strenuous exercise. On the morning of the 14th day, the researchers did something they said they would not do to get a reaction from the captives. They used the intercom inside the chamber, hoping to provoke any response from the captives they were afraid were either dead or vegetables. They announced... We are opening the chamber to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or you will be shot. Compliance will earn one of you your immediate freedom. So that would probably be a really strange scenario because given the fact they hadn't spoken in three days, they hadn't heard any noise coming from inside the chamber, but yet the people are still consuming oxygen then I'm sure the researchers and the staff there were probably like, what the crap is going on right now? We, uh, I don't know if we preface this. This takes place in 1947, by the way. So technology being a bit limited. Uh, yeah, try, to, security try to paint the picture for yourself. Yeah, it's not like we got that in 4K and Elon Musk has some high-tech you know, cameras in there. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure this was even a bit more freaky than... So they're about to open the door. Okay. So they're about to open the door. And to their surprise, they heard a single phrase in a calm voice response. We no longer want to be freed. Debate broke out among the researchers and the military forces funding the research. Unable to provoke any more response using the intercom, it was finally decided to open the chamber at midnight on the 15th day. The chamber was flushed of the stimulant gas and filled with fresh air and immediately voices from the microphones began to object. Three different voices began begging, as if pleading for the life of loved ones to turn the gas back on. The chamber was opened and the soldiers sent in to retrieve the test subjects. They began to scream louder than ever, and so did the soldiers when they saw what was inside. Four of the five subjects were still alive, although no one could rightly call the state that any of them were in life. Okay, well, that makes me think of, like, zombies. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine it, and I'm like, oh yeah, Call of Duty zombies. That's yeah. what they must have looked like. I'm sure that it was horrifying. There's, a, been there's there. a famous picture um, that, you know, hopefully we can just insert right in this area. Yeah. That looks everyone like knows what it looks like. Yeah. And that's essentially what they looked like. Uh, most everybody's seen that picture. That's where it's from. It's the, the Russian sleep experiment. Hmm. The food rations past day five had not been so much as touched. There were chunks of meat from the dead test subjects' thighs and chest stuffed into the drain in the center of the chamber, blocking the drain and allowing four inches of water to accumulate on the floor. 
Precisely how much of the water on the floor was actually blood was never determined. All four surviving test subjects also had large portions of muscle and skin torn away from their bodies. The destruction of flesh and exposed bone on their fingertips indicated the wounds were inflicted by hand, not with teeth, as the researchers in initially thought. Closer examination of the, pos the position and angles of the wounds indicated that most, if not all of them, were self-inflicted. So they were not eating themselves, but they were like... They are just tearing themselves tearing apart. Tearing themselves apart with their own fingers. Okay. The abdominal organs below the ribcage of all four test subjects had been removed. While the heart, lungs, and diaphragm remained in place, the skin and most of the muscles attached to the ribs had been ripped off, exposing the lungs through the ribcage. All the blood vessels and organs remained intact. They had just been taken out and laid on the floor, fanning out around the eviscerated but still living bodies of the subjects. The digestive tract of all four could be seen to be working, digesting food. It quickly became apparent that what they were digesting was their own flesh that they had ripped off and eaten over the course of days. Okay. So they were kind of zombies. So they were eating themselves. Cannibals. Or <clears throat> eating each other. I don't know. Uh, either way, that's gross. Yeah, those don't come in MREs nowadays, in case no. anyone was wondering. No, you don't. Never find out. No, you don't want to eat human flesh. Not good. Very yucky. Definitely one out of ten would not recommend. Not good. Not that I know. Uh, most of the soldiers were Russian special operatives at the facility. But many still refused to return to the chamber to return the, to remove the test subjects. They continued to scream to be left in the chamber and alternately begged and demanded that the gas be turned back on lest they fall asleep. To everyone's surprise, the test subjects put up a fierce fight in the process of being removed from the chamber. One of the Russian soldiers died from having his throat ripped out. Another was gravely injured by having his teeth ripped off and an artery in his leg severed by one of the subject's teeth. Another five of the soldiers lost their lives if you count ones that committed in the weeks following the incident. In the struggle, one of the four living subjects had his spleen ruptured and he bled out almost immediately. The medical researchers attempted to sedate him, but this proved impossible. He was injected with more than ten times the human dose of a morphine derivative and still fought like a cornered animal, breaking the ribs and arm of one doctor. When Hart was seen to beat for a full two minutes after he had bled out to the point where there was more air in his vascular system than blood, even after it stopped, he continued to scream and flail for another three minutes, struggling to attack anyone in reach and just repeating the word more over and over, weaker and weaker, until he finally fell silent. Okay, yeah, that's um, that sounds like an absolute abomination. Yeah, trigger warning for any sort of, you know, if you have a very good imagination. The surviving three test subjects were heavily restrained and moved to a medical facility. The two with intact vocal cords continuously begging for the gas demanding to be kept awake. The most injured of the three was taken to the only surgical operating room that the facility had. In the process of preparing the subject to have his organs placed back within his body, it was found that he was effectively immune to the sedative they had given him to prepare him for the surgery. He fought furiously against his restraints when the anesthetic gas was brought out to put him under. He managed to tear most of the way through a four inch wide leather strap on one wrist, even though the weight of a 200 pound soldier holding that wrist as well. It, it took only a little more anesthetic than normal to put him under, and the instant his eyelids fluttered and closed, his heart stopped. In the autopsy of the test subject that died on the operating table, it was found that his blood had tripled the normal level of oxygen. His muscles that were still attached to his skeleton were badly torn, and he had broken nine bones in his struggle to not be subdued. Most of them were from the force his own muscles had exerted on them. Yeah, that's, um... It sounds like he gained, like, superhuman strength from not sleeping. Yeah, he got the Captain America serum for sure. I don't... Was... Obviously, this is creepy pasta, so just, you know... It's, it's pasta not, that's creepy. It's not real, is it, Trigger? No, it's not real. All right, the second survivor had been the first of the group of five to start screaming. His vocal cords destroyed, he was unable to beg or object to surgery. And he only reacted by shaking his head violently in disapproval when the anesthetic gas was brought near him. He shook his head yes when someone suggested reluctantly they try the surgery without anesthetic and did not react for the entire six-hour procedure of replacing his abdominal organs and attempting to cover them with what remained of his skin. The surgeon presiding stated repeatedly that it should be medically possible for the patient to still be alive. 
One terrified nurse assisting the surgery stated that she had seen the patient's mouth curl into a smile several times whenever his eyes met hers. That's creepy. If this were real, that, that would scar somebody for life. Yeah, you're going to need a lot of therapy for that. Yeah, you're going to need to talk to, you're going to need some heavy medication or talk to a therapist. Yeah. When the surgery ended, the subject looked at the surgeon and began to wheeze loudly, attempting to talk while struggling. Assuming this must be something of drastic importance, the surgeon had a pen and pad fetched so the patient could write his message. It was simple. Keep cutting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) The other two test subjects were given the same surgery, both without anesthetic as well, although they had to be injected with a a paralytic for the duration of the operation. Which I would imagine a paralytic sounds like paralysis, meaning that they probably were injecting them with something to paralyze them temporarily so they wouldn't be flailing around and cause harm to somebody. Not a lot of options back then, so I'm sure it sucked either way. Yeah, regardless of if this story was real. Yeah, if it was real. Uh, The surgeon found it impossible to perform the operation while the patients laughed continuously. Once paralyzed, the subjects could only follow the attending researchers with their eyes. The paralytic cleared their system in an abnormally short period of time, and they were soon trying to escape their bonds. The moment they could speak, they were again asking for the stimulant gas. The researchers tried asking why they had injured themselves, why they had ripped out their own guts, and why they wanted to be given the gas again. Only one response was given. I must remain awake. I like sleeping too much to understand how that could possibly be. Unless you're having recurring nightmares. Unless you're just like in a permanent state of sleep paralysis and you're trying to escape your sleep paralysis demon or something. Okay. At that point, you got to throw hands with your sleep paralysis demon. Don't let them punk you like that. Just swing. Yeah. Uh, But don't rub feces on anything. No. No. no And if you do poop in the bed, it's okay. I think we're all good for one of those like at least once a year. One poop a bed is okay. That's okay. You're not crazy. Any more than that. Once a a month is a bit much, but... Yeah, any more than pooping your bed once a year is too much. All three test subjects were ma- re- restraints. Okay. All three test subjects restraints were reinforced and they were placed back into the chamber awaiting determination as to what should be done with them. The researchers facing the wrath of their military benefactors for having failed the stated goals of their project considered euthanizing the surviving subjects. The commanding officer in X8 KGB instead saw potential and wanted to see what would happen if they were put back on the gas. The researchers strongly objected but were overruled. Yeah, as if as if it hadn't gone awry enough. Let's keep going. Yeah. In preparation for being sealed in the chamber again, the test subjects were connected to an EEG monitor and had their restraints padded for long-term confinement. To everyone's surprise, all three stopped struggling the moment it was let slip that they were going back on the gas. It was obvious that at this point all three were putting up a great struggle to stay awake. One of the subjects that could speak was humming loudly and continuously. The mute subject was straining his legs against the leather bonds with all his might, first left, then right, then left again for something to focus on. The remaining subject was holding his head off his pillow and blinking rapidly. Ah. Having been the first to be wired for EEG, most of the researchers were monitoring his brainwaves in surprise. They were normal most of the time, but sometimes flatlined inexplicably. It looked as if he were repeatedly suffering brain death before returning to normal. As they focused on paper scrolling out the brainwave monitor, only one nurse saw his eyes slip shut. At the same moment, his head hit the pillow. His brainwaves immediately changed to that of deep sleep, then flatlined for the last time as his heart simultaneously stopped. The only remaining subject that could speak started screaming to be sealed in now. His brainwaves showed the same flat lines as one who had just died from falling asleep. The commander gave the order to seal the chamber with both test subjects inside, as well as three researchers. One of the named three immediately drew his gun and shot the commander point blank between the eyes, then turned the gun on the mute subject and blew his brains out as well. He pointed his gun at the remaining subject, still restrained to the bed, As the remaining members of the medical and research team fled the room, I won't be locked in here with these things. Not with you. He screamed at the man strapped to the table. What are you? He demanded. I must know. The subject smiled. Have you forgotten so easily? The subject asked. We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. 
We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. Impressive that a guy went from like, speaking gibberish or not talking at all to speaking an extremely eloquently put sentence that was intended to terrify somebody. That's like the new one of the newest creepy pastas is like quick little stories I've seen on TikTok where it's about people going back to where it, like when Jesus was alive and he's, you know, he spoke Latin and then he this guy went back in time, saw Jesus and he turned to him and in perfect English was like you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Last sentence of this whole thing says, the researcher paused, then aimed at the subject's heart and fired. The EEG flatlined as the subject weakly choked out. And then in quotes, the last thing that the patient said was, so nearly free. And that's it. Well, that's, uh, that's extremely creepy and extremely graphic. And, uh, I don't know if there's ever been any other like actual legitimate lack of sleep tests to see what happens to a human, but I'm pretty sure that if you don't sleep for an extended period of time, it'll actually something tells me we've had you. experiments like this or something similar to see, see how the brain functions in moments like this. MK Ultra. There's a few other operations that are I'm blanking on, but I know we definitely have done some weird stuff like that. I've read way too many stories on it when I started uh, studying some psychology in college. So the next question I have, and this this is from VeryWellHealth.com. It says, can you die from lack of sleep? What it says here is researchers did not know exactly how long humans can survive without sleep, but the longest record was 264 hours, just over 10 days which was achieved during a scientific sleep experiment. Um, still, you can start to feel the effects of sleep deprivation after not getting a sl enough sleep for just one night. I'm fairly certain you can't just die of it. I'm pretty sure your brain just goes, all right, that's it, and just closes yeah. the lights and then forces you to sleep. Yeah, I think that's probably what happened. Your body without sleep day by day. The effects of not getting enough sleep can be felt right away. After a few days of not sleeping, severe symptoms can develop, including hallucinations and psychosis, That's fair. which psychosis is absolutely what all of these guys were quote unquote feeling. You just go absolutely bananas and gooberish behavior. Let's see. The stages of sleep deprivation don't take long to progress, usually playing out over just a few days, 24 hours without sleep. The day after a poor night's sleep, you might start having symptoms like headache, fatigue, irritability, sadness, trouble concentrating, slow physical and mental reaction time, jitteriness. 48 hours without sleep. Usually getting enough restful sleep for the next one or two nights will help you feel better. However, if you continue to not get enough rest, the symptoms of sleep deprivation will get worse. After a couple days in a row without getting enough sleep, you probably won't die, but you will have trouble staying awake. You may fall asleep no matter what you are doing, though that sleep is not going to be as restful as your body needs. At this state of sleep deprivation, you may have a hard time focusing or doing your usual tasks. When you are awake, you'll probably feel extremely tired or physically weak. Three or more nights without sleep. Chronic sleep deprivation can lead to death, but it's very rare. I think the reason why they say that is because like, your body's going to naturally make you fall asleep you're just gonna pass out after after long enough without sleep and if you're going um, 80 down the highway when that happens you know yeah so absolutely obviously if you haven't gotten enough sleep don't be driving um let's see three nights without sleep or more at this severe stage of sleep deprivation a person may have full-blown symptoms of sleep deprivation psychosis such as seeing and hearing things that are not there you may also feel paranoid and anxious or have delusional thinking extremely uncommon disorders such as fatal familial insomnia or sporadic fatal insomnia can cause a person to die from lack of sleep these conditions make it physically impossible for a person to get enough sleep mm. what a horrible affliction that would be uh, let's see here. Sleep is the best. Yeah. There's no tears. It doesn't say if you can die from it or not. I don't think it's necessarily so much you going without sleep kills you. It's perhaps the moment that your body starts shutting down, you start hallucinating and wherever you are and whatever you're doing can cause you, can cause death when it does inevitably shut you down. So 
Hmm. You pass out wherever you are. I swear to God, I, I read a story about a guy in a hot air balloon that did that. He just knocked right out. In a hot air, in in a hot hot air, air balloon? balloon? Yep. I, I don't know. Hmm. Somebody fact check me on that. But uh, I, I swear I read a story about it once. I'm not sure. I know what it's like to go one to two days. Oh, here's an interesting study. There's research from 2010 that suggests that staying up for 20 to 25 hours affects your focus and performance as much as having a blood alcohol content of 0.10%, which in most places that's over the legal limit of alcohol consumption. That's actually for operating a motor vehicle. So if you don't sleep for a full 24 hours, that's equivalent to being over, or it's like the level the level of performance inhibition that that would affect would be equivalent to being over the legal limit to drive. So if your friends want to go drinking and you don't, just stay up the whole day before. Don't sleep. You'll fit right in. Let's see. Oh, here's what they think about, to put it more uh, plainly, about three days without sleep. And this is from Healthline. To put it plainly, going without sleep for three days or longer is very dangerous. The side effects listed above will only get worse. You'll probably start experiencing more frequent hallucinations and increased paranoia. Eventually, symptoms of psychosis can trigger a disconnect from reality. Your risk of having an accident while driving or performing any potentially risky task will increase greatly as you experience more micro-sleeps. If it's been more than three days and you can't sleep, it's best to see your healthcare provider right away. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Don't um, don't thug it out. <laughs> yeah, no, don't, definitely yeah. don't try to thug that out if you haven't slept for three days. You're not built like that. You're not that guy. No, you're not that guy, pal. Eventually, your brain will stop functioning properly, which can lead to organ failure and, in rare cases, death. Plus, your risk of having some kind of accident skyrockets. Well, this, I mean, this all sounds legit. I've I've yeah. I've had these symptoms before. It's for me. It's while driving because that's when my brain is the most cozy. Just sitting down, listening to my favorite music. I actually fall asleep easier than in a car than I do in my own bed. Yeah, I know that because I've pulled over rest areas before. But the hallucinations, yeah, big one for me. And the comparison between a blood alcohol content of point one, that's pretty fair. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend uh, driving or operating any type of heavy heavy machinery if you haven't gotten an adequate amount of sleep the night before, which is one of the reasons why oftentimes in the military, they kind of mandate that if somebody's driving a tactical vehicle, they have to have been provided the opportunity for eight hours of sleep the night prior um, to avoid accidents and mishaps and things like that. But um, at least that's the Marine Corps has certain orders that have been written out for different areas because of that uh, to, to prevent accidents from occurring. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, that's a creepy pasta again. Just remember, this isn't real. This is just a story that someone wrote. The author is unknown, so no one knows who the author for this is. Um, but whoever that person is, uh, probably suffers from lack of sleep. I he, he definitely had some whack dreams, and then realized that um, the vibes were off the next day. Yeah. And he wanted to tell everyone about the visions he had. Or this is just an incredibly creative person who I hope wherever you are, I hope you wrote a book or something. Yeah, I hope that whoever this person is is okay. I I think that uh, the chances are, the odds are that this person is affected or afflicted with some sort of inability to sleep or has a hard time sleeping is probably high. He might have this person or he or she, they may have insomnia potentially because that would explain. That would explain why they know so much about like what happens in the first couple days. Yeah, that would explain a lot. So it's possible. But anyway, yeah, hope you enjoy the video. We'll see you next time. Bye. See ya.